Maybe I need to go look for it. See, sometimes in life we, we lose focus on the important thing that God is trying to do in our life. Sometimes we drift away. Sometimes we lose direction. Sometimes we forget where God has brought us from. And as I was looking for my dog, I kept calling her and calling her and nothing. There was nothing. So then I began to get a little worried. Like, okay, what's going on? I just left for a little bit. I was only gone not that long, and my dog's already missing. God is reaching out to you. This world can have so much enticing things that can draw you away from God. It could be people, it could be family, it could be, it could be anything. And some of us that have probably been here for years are like, nope, not me, preacher. No, not I. I'm good. And the sad part is, is that there's many people who serve God who, let me rephrase that, who served God, who could sit on an apostolic pew and still be far away from God. Can I, get, can I get a witness here, somebody? You could still be lost and still just sit back and, and God could be moving and nothing will move you. You could sit there with a stern face and, and look at the time and say, okay, preacher, you got 10 minutes left. Hurry it up. I need to go home because I have a show I got to watch. Unfortunately, the sad truth is it's like that with some churches. It's, so, it's like that. But a true person who really loves God who never gives up, who any, every time they fall, they get right back up. Those are the people that know God's mercy. Those are the ones who know what it's like to feel the love of God wrap them again and hold them and be able to pour their whole soul and everything that's within them to him. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. I believe God's trying to reach out to some people. So as I was looking for my dog calling, calling her, calling her, whistling. Brother, nothing, nothing. So then my wife says, well, go drive around and see if you can find her. Because I'll tell you what, I have a fence in the front yard and it's about four, four and a half feet tall or whatever. And brother, I've caught her climbing it. Big dog, it's a rot. Big, just, just climbed it like it was nothing. And I have my, my, other, my other dogs, which is a boxer, and, you know, he's real goofy and they're real playful. And, but he didn't think about jumping over. She did because she was wondering what else is out there. What else I thank God for his protection. I thank God 
for his truth that sets boundaries that tells me when I'm going too much to, to my left I read the word and it tells me go back this to the right and that's why I thank God for this truth because I can't do it without the word of God and without the spirit of God in my life I can't do it without him Today, today makes a year. Some of you don't know. I, you, I was a, an alcoholic. And I'm sure, you know, oh, we hear this all the time. But for me, it's so important because people didn't understand, like, the times where I would be by myself. And I would sit down outside, and I would just drink and drink and drink, and I wouldn't care. And I would drink so much till I passed out, till I blacked out, till I wake up the next day not knowing what I did. And I remember seeing my kids, to them seeing dad drink was becoming normal that's just dad he's drinking with his friends again and now that I look back at it I thank God so much more now because now I could pass by a liquor store I could pass by people <laughs> drinking and, and I don't want it anymore I don't crave that stuff anymore because God has set me free. I think a lot about this scripture right here, the lost sheep. Especially because I, I am a backslider, I was a backslider. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 5. And, and when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Verse 6, 15, chapter 15, 6. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friend and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. This morning I got up and I wanted to double check just to make sure that my dog was, if she came back. Sure enough, she did. She came back. Let me tell you, if you're thinking about the world, about it being better, about it satisfying all your needs. You're wrong. Nothing can satisfy you like Jesus. And that's why I believe my dog came back, because she knew that if she was to go out there, she wouldn't make it. She wouldn't be able to eat, drink water. That's why I'm happy when I come to the house of God because I'm here and I'm able to eat. I'm able to be drinking from the fountain of living waters. So as that, 
all that happened yesterday, God just brought this, these scriptures to my, to my attention, and that's why I just felt led to, to, to read these. And if you would go to uh, verse number 8, it says, Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, Doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. I came back from a trip to Arizona and we had went down to Winslow. And uh, brother, they had this little coin machine that you put 50 cents in a penny and you, you turn the wheel and you get, you get your penny turns into a little image of whatever it is that the options they give you. And so I, we were there, and, and I, I put one in, turned it, and I gave one to my daughter. And then, of course, the other one wanted, wanted it too. So I had to go get some change. <laughs> and I did it again and, and uh, gave it to the other one. Well, we were at the hotel later on that day, and we were packing everything up. And my oldest daughter, she lost her coin. Brother, you should have seen how frantic she was because she lost her coin. So she was crying and saying, I lost it, I lost it. Where is it at? I can't find it. I had it right here. I can't find it. It's gone. It's missing. So my wife and I were looking and we're trying to help. We're pushing the beds apart. We're pulling the, the blankets off the sheets and, and we're looking for it and I couldn't find it. And I told her, I said, Mama, I'm sorry, but, you know, we're just going to have to go get you another one. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's like, no. No, Dad. I, I want that one. And you know what? I started to really think and understand how much, how valuable we are to God how much valuable each and every single one of you are to him that if one was to be lost it wouldn't be the same you are special in his eyes you are his bride you're his beauty here he desires to want to talk to you he desires a walk with you he desires to Just to love you and, and mold you. That's why when I come to church, I do get excited. I do clap my hands. I do run the aisles. I do pray my biggest prayer. I do seek him the best that I can because he first love me and so today church where are you in your walk with God are you lost are you so confused or what's going on in your life 
that you don't know which direction to go in. As much as my daughter was looking for that coin, it's as much as God is looking for you. God is seeking to walk with you. God I'm just so grateful today church because I remember being that lost sheep I remember being that lost coin and I remember every time that I would try to fit in somewhere with friends and all that I always felt out of place I always felt like I didn't belong, like I had a different purpose in life. Can I get a musician, please? I'm not going to keep you long today. But I feel like God is reaching out to some, some of us. I wonder if we could all stand. <clears throat> if you could just close your eyes just for a little bit. And I want you to think about that time when you first met Jesus. That time when he filled you with his spirit. The time when you were just so lost and he found you. The love that he poured out for you the blood that he shed for you. There's no greater love. If you're thankful today for what God has done in your life, if you're thankful for the times when you were sick and you prayed and God healed you. If it was a time when you thought like throwing in the towel and God picked you back up and he dusted the dirt off your feet. Or if you were bound he loosed the chains from your hands. And he threw them before you. I wonder if there's anybody who is here today who is thankful for the love that he has for you. I wonder if there's anybody who desires a closer walk with God. I wonder if there's anybody here today.